Attention all viewers, the program you are about to watch, Searching for Sasquatch, is for entertainment purposes. Accounts described by guests are claimed to be true and accurate. Some names have been changed to protect individual privacy. Jason Kenzie is an expert animal adventurer with 25 years of field experience. Caution and companionship is advised for all who venture into the deep forest or backcountry. I'm going to tell you what's scarier than Sasquatch. Spiders. Spiders are way scarier than Sasquatch. I don't know, Jason. They've always been super scary. And then they always run at me. <laughs> and then it doesn't matter. Like, every there could be 10 people in the room and it runs directly at me like it knows. That you're scared. That I'm scared. <laughs> and it probably does. But, yeah, it's always been that way. I wake up having night terrors seeing spiders in the room with my eyes open. Oh, yeah. Listen, yeah. listen, listen, hang on, shh. Do you hear that? Come on, guys, oh. please don't arrest anyone. Well, you can you take think, Jason, guys? though. Wait, what? Before I began my investigations into the lure of Bigfoot, I traveled the world meeting people who live with the most amazing animals. The dynamics that surround these forest giants is very complex. Wow, this is so cool. As a skeptic, I'm on a mission, an adventure of a lifetime, to find evidence that if these Bigfoot creatures are real, I can once and for all put my doubts aside and share with the world that that sound of that simple crack in the forest may not just be a chipmunk. My name is Jason Kenzie. These are my chronicles into searching for Sasquatch. Oh. I hear something. Oh, I saw it. I saw it. I saw it. My name is Jason Kenzie. I'm in Black Duck, Minnesota. I'm going to be meeting the She Squatches. Now, who are the She Squatchers? They are an all female Bigfoot research group. You guys are gonna learn who they are. Let's go and meet the ladies. Where am I looking? There. Okay. No intro? Hi. How you doing? Yeah. <laughs> My name is Jen Cruz. I was born and raised in the state of Minnesota. I am team leader of the She Squatchers. I am working as a holistic healer for 24 years now. Hi, my name is Tammy Trichel. I have been a Bigfoot researcher for about five years. Tell me about yourself. Hi, my name is Jennifer Grover. I'm one of the three She Squatchers, and I'm very proud to be one. We work hard, we play hard, we love hard, and we have a good time at the same time. And who are the She Squatchers? The She Squatchers are the first all-female Bigfoot research team in the Midwest. We started in 2015. I was doing an interview with Lauren Coleman, the cryptozoologist who has the International Cryptozoology Museum in the state of Maine. I was interviewing him for my then paranormal radio show. And it was his idea to send women into the woods without men, dogs, or guns to see if we could get a little closer, have a one-on-one -on -one interaction with some Bigfoot. He this said, is quite interesting what Jen was saying because back in Kentucky, the ladies did go into the forest. They may not have been alone, but I have to say, they did have a feeling that we were being watched. Let me show you. And don't you worry, we will return back to their interviews in a jiffy. So right now, we, we are now at a graveyard in the forest. We've driven close to where we're going to be hiking into the forest. This is a beautiful graveyard. Look at these. Put the black light on it. Yeah, take, take we're not saying that these footprints are made by a large okay. Bigfoot. Really Maybe well by there. its cousin, Smallfoot. See, there's one right here, another one right there. They just look like juvenile. There's no claw prints or anything. But it's, it's just something to notice, you can't do anything But as with soon it. as the sun went down, the forest came alive with movement all around us. Where, 
we are on this bridge. We're all just hanging out. And we just heard something, you know, some kind turtles. of walking through the forest here. Jen thinks she saw some red eyes. Right, Jen? I did see some red. I saw something. But with all these fireflies around here, it's kind of, you know. Now we're just listening. It's about 10 o'clock at night. There's lots of us for the Bigfoots to eat, so. Hours pass by with no luck so catching a glimpse last, of Smallfoot. You know, it was time for us to turn in and get ready for our next Bigfoot adventure. He said that the Bigfoot that people are seeing close to the roads and, and where humans are, are typically younger male Bigfoots, and that he thought they would be a little bit more inclined to come in closer to have a look at some ladies. So he, he challenged me basically to, to try this out. Did, and Did it work? Did he challenge me hard enough? I volunteered jokingly at first, but by the end of the interview with him, I, I was seriously volunteering. I am also a scuba diver. I also have a green belt in kickboxing. I have many, many children. I gave birth to five children. I adopted many more through the years that needed mommies who loved them. I love to travel. I love to explore and do new things. I love to have any kind of adventure. And I just love being with my girls and with my friends and living my best life. I lost my husband uh, about four years ago. Uh, he had a brain tumor and I went through a lot of difficulties and had to leave Minnesota because I wasn't having any support here and so I moved to Virginia where my friends were and they helped me heal and helped me rebuild my life and I had to start over with my life. It was my third time starting over with my life but now I'm here and I'm great and I'm doing well. When I grew up, I grew up on a farm, and on the farm we, we made our own fun. We were given a stick, and that stick could be a sword, it could be, you know, anything we wanted it to be. So I learned to have a great imagination since I was young. I was always interested in the supernatural, especially spirits, and so I would always talk to people and say, you know, oh, come on, let's have a, let's have a, a seance. So I, every birthday party or party I'd have, we'd go and we'd have seances, and. You know, I had abilities that I never really talked about to very many people at all because it was embarrassing and who knows if you're nuts, you know, especially at that age. So I kept a lot of that to myself um, with, within a, with exceptions of a few people. What did your family think about you? I didn't tell anybody. I didn't tell anyone about what I was experiencing because like I said, I didn't want to sound like the weirdo. Well, I grew up in Minnesota. I was always in the woods with my mom and then alone. Growing up in the woods, I'd never ever seen or heard anything that made me think that Bigfoot was even real. I didn't believe in Bigfoot. I absolutely enjoy traveling um, out in nature, anything having adventures in nature, looking for Bigfoot, hiking, camping, being out on the water, boating, fishing, canoeing. So, uh, how was the paddling? But he assured me that Bigfoot was real and in my home state of Minnesota. And so my curiosity got the best of me. And of course, a double dog dare doesn't always hurt, right? Uh, so uh, I, I grabbed some ladies to go out to try it. The ladies that I took with me the very first time were paranormal investigators. And I selected them because they had night vision cameras that I thought maybe would see in the dark. But when we went out the very first time, we found out very quickly that their night vision cameras do not light up the woods like, like they do haunted houses. They, you couldn't see very far at all. So that didn't work out very well. I am a psychic medium. Um, I had been using my, my abilities to help looking for missing people. I found some missing people. And I was also using um, geographic remote viewing uh, to, to look at locations to see if we could find missing people and then I was also using it to help paranormal research groups before they went to a, a location to investigate I would look at it 
and tell them what I saw there and what was happening and what I suggested to take care of the problem. So I knew that my accuracy rating was really, really high because I had been using it for years doing those types of things. So when we started looking for Bigfoot, I thought, hmm, I wonder if we can find Bigfoot in the woods remotely, both remote viewing, prior to going there and, and select our locations that way. And it's actually been working quite well. What is the scariest Bigfoot encounter you've ever had, even paranormal? I can tell you my very first paranormal experience. I was four years old. I was at my grandmother's house. I was sitting on her front steps and I was just playing and I looked up and across the street in a tree, I thought I saw something move. So I felt kind of weird and I just kept watching. And then it moved and I saw it, it was clear and I couldn't see it until it actually moved and I just got really, really scared. And all of a sudden it jumped down out of the tree and started running across the street at me. So I jumped up and tried to run into my grandmother's house but I couldn't get the door open. So I was pulling on the door and pulling on the door and I finally got the glass door open and as I ran inside, it slammed into the glass door and shut it. And my mother said, stop slamming the door. But I was four and I didn't know how to tell my mother that I, had something chasing me so I just didn't say anything at all. So what are the feelings that you get from other people that don't believe you? I don't care if you believe me or not. <laughs> I'm not the type of person who cares what other people think of me. I live by my own experiences and I you know have my own thoughts and I don't really care if somebody believes me or not. When you were growing up did you think of Bigfoot? No, not at all. In fact, the first cryptid that I was aware of was the Chupacabra, which is down in Texas. And when my father, um, my mother and father were farmers, so it, during the summer we would go to Texas, down in Donna, Texas, which is actually where I graduated. And uh, my friends would tell me about this, this scary cryptid called Chupacabra. And they said, if you say it three times, it'll come. So every once in a while I'd throw out, Chupacabra, you know, and they'd be like, no, no. So Chupacabra was very serious to them and they took it very serious. So I got to learn a little bit about the cryptids and well that particular cryptid. And so when Jen started talking about Bigfoot, that's when I was like, okay, that, mm, 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 okay, yes. My idea honestly was all about the exercise, the camaraderie and just getting out and finding something that's never been found. You know what I mean? Just to be part of something and a part of a beautiful group of friendship. You don't find that all the time. I love my girls. I love them. Fighting, we do. Laughing, we do. Loving, we do. We play hard and we rest hard. Oh, I mean, I have to admit, we do work hard too. So what happens when people think that you do not go out into the woods? We set them straight. So we are looking for Bigfoot. Show them pictures, show them videos of us being out there. You know, that's a thing. We're out there doing this for us, no one else, but when they question if we really, because a lot of people think that we may just be a scam, a fad. You know what, we're not. We're doing this for us. We're out there because of us. Not only the camaraderie, but you've got exercise and you've got great friendships. So what do you say to the people that love you? I love you back. <laughs> How did you meet the other two she squatches? The, my current team, which has been with me from, well, Jenna, Jenna and I have been friends for many, many years. I actually met her first because I went to massage therapy school with her brother. And after I graduated from school, I started doing um, office massage at Cargill Financial Service Center where Jenna was the front desk girl. Uh, so I met her there and she's like, hey, you went to school with my brother. I was like, oh yeah. <laughs> and then we just became friends. Uh, so that was many, many, many years ago. Tammy and I had originally met as children on a beach in the state of Virginia. Uh, we crossed paths and kind of recognized each other when we were adults and met again. Um, and, and we met at a psychic fair in Fargo, a holistic expo, and uh, where I was giving a workshop, she came to my workshop. So we met there again. And it was just weird that we had met on a, on a beach in the state of Virginia when we were 10 and 11 years old. And now we were meeting again in Fargo, North Dakota at a psychic fair. Uh, she came to my workshop and she had actually moved to my hometown area and she was living like two miles away from my farm where I grew up. She married a guy that I had known since I was five years old. 
So, I mean, it was just kind of weird how our lives intertwined like that. So what is your nationality? I'm an enrolled tribal member of the Red Lake Band of Chippewa Indians in northern Minnesota. I'm Megizi clan, Eagle clan. Um, but I'm also Swedish and German and English and a whole bunch of other Norwegian. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a great mixture of a whole bunch of things. Since your time uh, with the She Squatchers, uh, what has happened? Have you traveled the world? Have you traveled North America? What has happened? I traveled the world before I was with the She Squatchers, but <laughs> since I've been with the She Squatchers, I had my very first Bigfoot experience and many more since then. Our best experience was when we were on top of the mountains in Tennessee and there was no lights up there and uh, we had remote viewed beforehand and we had decided that we were going to go up on top of this mountain with Matthew Delph of Micro. And we went up there and Jen was remote viewing up there and she saw that there was one on the remote view about 30 feet away. So I grabbed the FLIR and I jumped out of the car and sure enough, 30 feet away, there was a Bigfoot sitting there and he had his arm up and he was, the hair was hanging down off of his arm and he was just relaxing. And then he started working with his hands and I was trying to record and I couldn't get it to record because I was my first time using this FLIR. So I'm going through and I'm just hitting the settings and I can't hit the record button. So I was yelling to Jenna, whose FLIR it was, um, to come and help me get it to record. So when they came over and we finally got it to start recording, I actually got 13 minutes of footage of Bigfoot working on something. And we think he was probably skinning an animal. Um, we're not sure, it was, it was warm, whatever he had in his hands. And he, he didn't try to run away and we didn't try to get any closer. And we just got the footage and we were actually the ones who decided to turn away because we had enough footage. I mean, 13 minutes is plenty. So um, we turned away and then when we got went back afterwards, then he was gone. And I just lived life. I, you just accept it and move on. And a lot of what I experienced was um, sensations. I automatically went like my aunt, her hands were just horribly arthritic. And even as a little girl, I would go right up to her and grab her hands. And she would always say, how do you do that? Because all of the blood would, would come out of her hands. They'd be white. Throughout life, I've done everything from automatic writing to, and yeah, I did use a Ouija board when I was younger, learned my lesson, won't be doing that again. Um, you name it, I've done it as far as a supernatural, at least trying things, finding things. Uh, trying to communicate with spirit, especially in front of people. I wanted to prove that spirits were real because they were real to me. So where did you get started in the sheep watches? When? Um, Jen had actually been out on a, well, she didn't want to, she hadn't told me, but Jen went out on an expedition and I went to see her one day at her office and she lowered her head because she was embarrassed and she said, Jenna, I've got something to tell you. She said, I, I, I'm on this team and I started this team, we're gonna go out and we're gonna look at look for Bigfoot. And she told me about their experiences, which were amazing. And I couldn't believe, I couldn't believe it. All I wanted, I was like, why well, want on? You know, that was like a dog begging, I wanted she, on. Why was she embarrassed? It's Bigfoot. We didn't know anything about Bigfoot. We didn't, we didn't, I didn't even know that there was a Bigfoot thing. I really didn't know there was teams out there. It was never in my thought process. It was never in my way of looking. It was never in my lifestyle. So when she told you about it, you just jumped to the chance? Oh, I jumped. I said, I want in, I want in. So, and at that time it was the first expedition. So there was just a bunch of people that didn't, nobody knew what they were doing. So they were no longer part of the team. What would you like to say to your fans? Tell me something that you don't really tell anyone. I'm amazing. I'm kidding, I tell everybody that. No, but really, I mean, one thing I do want to mention is life is hard, and I've had a really hard life, but I know that we can get through anything. I was, in 2009, I uh, was septic. A doctor nicked my colon in a routine laparoscopy. I was at home for 48 hours dying in bed. I had my mother-in-law finally bring me to the hospital because I knew I was dying. I'm, I get to the hospital, they basically say, um, they make me wait for an hour. And I, until, it wasn't until I stopped breathing, being unable to breathe, that they finally put me into a room. The surgeon stood in front of me. I was so trying to take care of the people, my loved ones in the room and make sure they didn't worry that I wasn't concerned about myself. They had given me medicine to calm the constant steady pain of like nine, but when it came to the acid dripping, it was 100. 
So I really tried to help them and stay calm, but the, the surgeon came up to me and said, he actually stood right in front of my bed, and he said, Jennifer, this is serious. You could end up with an ostomy bag, and I knew he was going to say die. So they rolled me away, and there was actually, before that, there was an accident victim that had come in, and someone had heard the doc, my surgeon say, she's an hour away from death. She is going in now. So he saved my life. So going in to surgery, I remember being rolled, and then I, at that point, my, my body was completely shutting down. It was, uh, it was like just basically shaking. I was dying. And uh, the next thing I know, um, I'm experiencing incredible things. I'm in a life review room. It, it was a room and all the walls had different pictures and videos and some were black and white and some were colored. P some I knew people, some I didn't. And I was just looking at it in amazement and awe because I, I mean, they were everywhere, all over these walls. And I, as I was looking, this little, little old lady, she must have been a hundred years old, was sitting in a chair directly from across from me and there was a door right next to her and she said you're seeing this aren't you and I said yeah and she said you shouldn't be and she guided me out the other door then I was in a meadow and in this meadow there were trees it the trees were so tall and the colors of these trees were so amazing the colors were amazing and the leaves themselves it was like they were happy and they were smiling and I was just amazed and I just sat and stared and then I looked at the ground and the grass was moving like it was white, like water waves, and it was so beautiful. And it was a different color than the tree. The tree, it, it, everything had it such beautiful color and such intense energy. And that's when I noticed that I didn't have a body. I felt like I should have a body. I was con like in here in my mind, I thought I should have a body, but I realized that I didn't feel the wind. I didn't hear anything. You know what I mean? So, oops, sorry. I realized that where I was and what kind of what I was what was happening well I ended up seeing a stone path because there were there was a whole nother line of trees in front of me there was a stone path in front of that and I followed the path and I looked and there was a man on a horse and there was two children on the back you know on the hump of the back and um, they were walking or the horse was walking with them and they had gotten almost a little bit past directly past me and I just remember locking eyes with the man on the horse and it was as if a vacuum sucked my energy, sucked me. And it was like, if I could do this, it was like that, that kind of thing where it just went and I was gone the minute I looked into his eyes. And it took me a long time to forgive myself because I thought at the moment that because I hesitated uh, jumping on that horse, mm -hmm. that was my fault. So it took me a long time to realize that, you know, my brother had just died six months before. My father had died five months before. And I had the realization that all God's children, and that's them saying, you know, there's no room on this horse for you. There's no room. You have stuff to do. Thus the she squatches. <laughs> and what does your children think about you doing Bigfoot stuff? Well, my kids are, they're a little indifferent because, you know, they're young. Some of them think it's cool that their mom is on TV and doing things and going around looking for Bigfoot, and some of them think it's embarrassing. <laughs> but altogether, they're supportive of me. You know, they just, they know that I'm having a good time and they like that I have something that I love to do and I'm able to travel, which I love, uh, with, my, with my girls. So the She Squatchers and I, we have, we have great adventures and we love it. So tonight we're gonna to be meeting up with Jason Kenzie, the filmmaker from Canada. He is a Bigfoot researcher doing a documentary series on Bigfoot searching for Sasquatch. And also Todd Shalott is gonna meet us with him. He's also doing some camera work. He's a paranormal investigator and he's also dipping his, his, his skills into the Bigfoot research as well. So we're excited to have them along to document what we're doing uh, and follow us along our path. Tonight on the Red Lake Indian Reservation, we are going to be going on a, on a trail that we have gone on many times, but we haven't gone on there for a long time. This is a closed reservation, which means that people aren't just allowed to get out of the car and walk around. They have to be with a tribal member to get off the roads and go off into the nature areas. So everybody needs to stay close by me tonight because I'm the only tribal member in the group. So they need to be by me at all times. 
The reservation was closed during COVID. When nobody could come on unless you had official business there. Looking for Bigfoot isn't good enough reason to come on during COVID because they actually had people at the border stopping you. We haven't been there in like three years on this trail. So we're really excited to get back there. This is where we had found some really, really neat den-like Bigfoot structures that the elders tell me they know Bigfoot was making those. It wasn't made by any, by any locals. So we're really excited to get back there and see if they're still there, what's going on back there now. Um, it's a trail that we've driven on before, and so we're gonna try to drive back there. Um, hopefully we can get in there. If not, we'll walk back. Okay, well, I'm with Jen, Todd, and Tammy. Hey, Tammy. Hi. Hey, Todd. Hey. And here's Jen. So right now we're on Jen's reservation, um, and we are on our way to meet some of our relatives to talk about Sasquatch. They have been roared at, screamed at, whooped at. Uh, this is gonna be a pretty exciting documentary. Uh, I'm very excited to uh, meet them, interview them, hear what they have to say. Uh, you know, this place has a lot of wild dogs. There's one there. That one's cute. Reservation dogs. Yep. And uh, so, do you want to explain a little bit about yourself? Heading to the Nema Lodge area, the sweat lodge where I was named in sacred ceremony, there's a, they, the locals call it the Obashing University, and so it's a teaching area and ceremonial area where they do their sacred ceremonies and, and uh, prayers and teaching of the culture and the old, old ways of the traditions. And it's back in the woods, it's, it's just a beautiful, beautiful space that ha holds a lot of very special memories for me especially all right this is cool so we're almost there now i will be talking to you guys later uh night time is coming fast and then we're going to go out into the forest and see if we can find any evidence of these sasquatch people all right talk to you guys later bye so we're at the area right now where we're going to spend the night it's beautiful here mm -hmm. And uh, hopefully tonight we have some kind of an experience with these creatures. We're on a First Nations. This is Red Lake Nation. This was my as um, the one who named me. This was his sweat lodge area, and um, he chose this area because he said he was walk his niece lives right over here, Vicky, and uh, he was walking in the woods back here looking for a good spot, and he felt a lightning bolt go down his leg, right where that sweat lodge is, and he knew that the little people were here and they were willing to help him do his healing work and teaching work here. So hopefully tonight we can see some of these little people or some of the big people which is called Sasquatches. There's another name for them here. What is that? It would be Gichisabe or Misabe. And we have tobacco or a sima or a knick in our left hands. And we're going to just give thanks for being here to our friends and spirits, the good spirits that are here. So, and uh, we're, we're going to give the tobacco. So what you want to say is miigwech is the, is the word for thank you. Miigwech. miigwech. You can just hold it in your hand and, and feel the, the gratitude and the thankfulness. And then you give it to something like a rock. You just place it down on a rock or on a tree or next to a tree. Somewhere like that in a nature thing. And miigwech, thank you for having me here. Miigwech, miigwech, miigwech. 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 So. Miigwech, thank you for having us here. Miigwech, thank you for having us here. Miigwech, thank you for having me here. <laughs> Hello, too. Okay, we're going with Vicky into the deep lit forest. <laughs> yeah, she's gonna show us. This is Vicky. Can I show you Vicky? Sure. This is Vicky. Hi Vicky. Bonjour. And how do you know Jen? She is my my beloved friend and my in-law. See? And she's gonna show us down these trails. Yeah. She's gonna show us where Bigfoot is. What are your thoughts on Bigfoot? 
My thoughts are that Bigfoot is a very strong spirit and a helper of the Ojibwe people. But if you're fortunate enough to visualize him in person, then we consider that he's a messenger for um, between the spirit world and the physical world. Now, have you seen Bigfoot? Actually, I haven't seen him. I've only seen him in my dreams. Ah. Uh -huh. And I've heard, I've heard him, or you, her. Oh, in the forest. Yes. And what did? Her and him say. He said he's here. Was it a roar or a yelp or a, it was a whoop? A, like a yelp, kind of. And yeah, did you feel scared when he heard um, it? Um, I was because I never heard anything like that. It almost sounds like a woman screaming. Oh, so it was a loud yep, like kind a of loud, a like a like, like a loud scream, like a person screaming, oh. and I got all kinds of spider webs all over me <laughs> right now so if i the spiders start, love me so if i start doing um karate yeah tai chi <laughs> while i'm walking in the woods then you'll know why yeah, yeah. <laughs> well let's hope we we have the 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 screaming bigfoot screaming at us tonight that would be yeah. okay i'm looking for any tree breaks or any tree structures <laughs> so we believe, okay, this mm -hmm. is just between you and me, okay? Okay. We believe that Todd, that's back there, mm -hmm. is part Sasquatch. Okay? <laughs> just, don't tell him I said that, okay? <laughs> if it goes into um, the documentary, I'm going to tell Todd that you forced me to put that part <laughs> in the documentary, okay? Okay. All right? So Todd, I'm sorry, my friend. But, uh, sorry, not sorry. Mm, that's Stop Sasquatch. Going. The nature's beauty was all around us. We moved through the forest as if we grew up there, as stoic as possible. Ouch! That's gonna leave a mark. My name is Jason Kenzie. I'm a filmmaker and Bigfoot researcher out of Vancouver, Canada. I've flown to Minnesota to film a documentary on the She Squatchers, an all-female research team founded in 2015. Jen is the founder and leader of the team. Jenna is the co-founder and tech advisor. And Tammy is the tracker of the team. We are researching the Indian reservation called Red Lake. The First Nations people say they have a long history with these creatures and the she squatchers are about to interview a few of their Jebwa tribal members. And action. action. Bonjour, my name is Elliot Cloud Sr. and I'm from the Red Lake Nation. And I live in the community of the Obashing, which is Panema, Minnesota. And I am 49 years old. I have four older siblings and my older sister is here right now and I have my mother which I live with and take care of and her name is Rose and I have four older kids four grown kids and three granddaughters I am from the Ojibwe tribe from the Red Lake Nation and I had this experience which was back in 2012. What was the experience you had with what? With uh, the Sasquatch, Musabi, Bigfoots. And we were, we were hunting in this, there was hunting season. And there was, uh, had a hunting party which were mainly my brothers and my nephews and three cousins. And we were hunting, we were allowed to hunt at night with spotlight. And we traveled, we just traveled this road, which is called Sucker Creek, and it's northern, northern area of, our, of my community here, our hunting lands. As we were approaching the, highway, the main highway, we were coming out of the, the, wood, the wooded roads and as we were approaching the highway, 
we ex we were just kind of rolling through, and we heard the scream, which was sounded like a lady. It was at a very high vocal and very strong, and we could feel the feel the aura of it throughout through all of us, and. We all shined our lights to the direction which was only probably 12 feet away from us. And it screamed at us three times. We could not see anything, we could not hear anything, could not hear the movement. But there was light snow. There was, there was just, wasn't really like heavy snow anywhere with this here and there spot, so we, we couldn't figure. But we, as we were parked there, our vehicle came to a stall, and we were there at least maybe 12 minutes tops. So when you heard the scream, were you actually in your vehicle? We were all in back of a box of the truck, and uh, okay. the the truck did not have a cab top. Yeah, and we were pretty much all in the open. But we had three three rifles, and we are all aimed, and we all sent them to, like, to the woods, like where we would eventually heard everything, and we could not hear anything after but the scream. And we not we didn't hear it leave, we didn't hear it run or make movement, but we heard only the scream, which was the strongest vocal we ever hear. So did you? Think that it was Sasquatch when you asked. we we felt that that it was it was beyond our vocals beyond a regular animal and it seemed like it was like a a startled scream and the last two were warnings we don't know I don't know if it was female we don't know if it was male or if there was others maybe babies near were you scared. Well, I was definitely afraid. We were all afraid. I'd be afraid too. And we we all decided to just we just came right in. Oh, did you? We we went straight all the way north, and there's our the road that came comes down. It's called East Boundary, and that's our boundary, boundary line. Yeah. We just we just came straightly home because everybody was afraid. Oh, so what happened with your second encounter? The second encounter was here. 3.30 in the morning and everybody was just returning home, people were going into their camps and and I was kind of figuring, you know, because everybody was eventually coming home, they were just getting home to themselves because they live right here. And I was putting stuff away, the drum, my outfit, my really, whatever they call it. And, and I was cleaning out the truck and I was sitting on the side of the house at home that's right across the street there. I came out to have a cigarette and when I was standing there in front of the truck, I heard this big roar, like a high powered roar. And you could, I could feel it from where I was standing, but it was back here. I really think it was right in this area. With that there, it was like, there was dogs, like multiple dogs, all different barks. And I could hear that roar again and hear the dogs yelping, three different yelps. So the dogs are actually probably getting attacked. And it made this other big roar like he was like angry. Like he was in attack mode or whatever. He was the defense modes or whatever. His roar was so powerful. It, you could feel that where I was standing. Yeah. So did it sound angry? Oh man, it was, it was in... Do you have that recording? Um, to tell you the truth, I don't know what happened to my recording. Wouldn't that be sh uh, too bad? I would love that. Yeah, I know. That, that whole whole incident lasted probably about 45 minutes tops because I could hear the dogs barely barking. They all went that way from here. And then after that, you just kind of turned in? It, Maybe it wanted a cigarette. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Give me a cigarette. Oh. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. But he was here, I know he was, and he's always, either he passes through or he comes here to, in our cultural way of, or in our cultural native way, we believe that he is our messengers of good and bad. We're gonna spend the night here 
what do you think the chances are that maybe we might have an experience? There's probably more than one clan of them out there. Like satyrs, yeah. all these ones that stay by the lake, yeah. and these ones all stay by the pines, you know? Different tree areas. Maybe there's oak grove area, and that's probably where some would be. Perfect. Quiet on set. Okay, uh, and action. Yeah, my name's Dan Frank Sr. And I come across something I heard about, but never believed it. What nation From, are you with? Huh? What nation? Red Lake. Red Lake Nation. So I was picking balsam at the time. And I turned in uh, off the road for going into going towards Redby. I drove down that road a little ways and parked. And I walked the rest of the way, probably about 50, 55 feet away from the truck. And I happened to look, I heard something off to my right. And I happened to see that thing walking, picking the what did What did you see? I seen a big huge Sasquatch walking. I just watched him for a while until he got out of view. And I just held tight up to him. You were got driving up. at yeah. the time? I, yeah, well, no. I got off the vehicle. I went down the old road, parked so far I can because it was all muddy, so I walked the rest of the way. And as soon as I got to where it was all clear, I looked to my right and I seen that thing walking right with me. And I just froze in my tracks and just watched it. And Until how long did you watch it for? About a good five minutes. Now, did you think you were in any danger? No, because he was just walking there, picking balls, just putting them in his arms. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, that's interesting. So you had another encounter? Yep. What uh, that encounter? That and was, was that just over here? Yeah, that was on East Boundary. And I was shining, I was out hunting, and I come across this field, and as soon as I spotted it, I seen a deer off to the side of it, and you could tell it was watching it. And I was watching him there for a while. And you had your light on the Sasquatch? Yep. You could see the, the dark figure of it. You could see that deer real good too. Were you, you walking? No, I was shining with a truck. Oh yeah. Yep. And uh, did you feel scared? No, because it was quite a ways away, so I didn't feel scared. Okay. I just watched it until it took off. These to encounters that Darren was telling us, well, they sent shivers down my spine. It's unbelievable that Darren even goes back into the woods. As the daylight is slowly disappearing, the she-squatchers, Todd and I, we wrap up these interviews. It's time for us to go into the area of these accounts to see if we can find any evidence of Bigfoot. But before we do this, Jenna has something special to do. It could be red or it could be blue. And it may be something packaged too. Which hand would you like to pick? This one or this one? Oh! You know what? That was the best answer. I heard you get the Oh, wow. <laughs> oh my god. Oh Best my. answer ever. Dang. Wow. I want that. <laughs> Damn. I don't know. <laughs> what did I do? <laughs> what did you just do? Made a little girl smile. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. yes. And we're going to go check it out before the sun goes down. Okay? And then it gets super cute over there. Yeah, why? Wait, that. why does it get super crazy? Because you can't see anything in the dark, and as soon as your lights go off, like the last time we were there, all of our equipment went dead, all of it, at once, very fast, and we were stuck in the dark and couldn't find our way out for a little while. Yeah. Okay. This, this time we are bringing extra batteries, extra flashlights, we're bringing a little extra of everything, I think. Extra Tammy. Extra Tammy this time, yeah. so. Oh, yeah, let's go. All right. Okay, climb in. Oh, and when the lights went out, things started moving in closer. We could just hear them. <laughs> it was crazy. Oh, I forgot my sunglasses. Shit. Can I borrow one of those? I don't know. You decide, Jenny. Make me a star. 
Which way am I going? What do you expect to, to find? I never expect anything. I just anticipate something fabulous is going to happen. Like what? Maybe an audio, a visual. Uh, I would love to see firsthand eye to eye contact. Look, an eyeball. I made a cameo. back up again. This is the place where they found a tree structure last time. So we need to see how much farther we need to go. I believe Jim still has the coordinates for it so we can find out where it was. So we're here and that's where we're going. But between here, like just even starting here, there's interesting stuff going on. So okay. we've got a little ways to walk yet. So. And did All you right. see any big bits on there? I did. Cockleberry. Oh, oh, oh. Look at them all. What is it? Middle. Middle. All of it. They are so itchy. Yeah. Right through. Yep. I'm I'm a victim right now. Oh, sorry I didn't. You kick my to. booty. Kick your booty. And top. Oh, 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 oh. Oh. I didn't fall. <laughs> <laughs> it oh, didn't God. happen. It's not an expedition unless I'm following. That's just what it is. Right, Jenna? What did you say? It's not an expedition unless I'm following. Yeah. As a cameraman, I had to go right through this because no pain, no gain. Oh. All right, you guys, in all seriousness, anything happens, the keys are in my bra. <laughs> you can dig them out, Jenna. All right, I got it. I got it. <laughs> <laughs> just remember, you asked I for did it. it. <laughs> Ouch. Suddenly, Jenna spotted what looked like a tree structure. Oh, wow. What the heck is this all about? Let me get my flashlight out. Come here. It could be just it's, tree fall, right? Yeah. You know? I think this could be tree fall. Wait a minute, help me see inside there. No sooner did we leave the first structure when Tammy no. pointed to another large structure deeper in the forest. What did you find? Careful, Careful. 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 Careful.
Okay. It's jammed in the ground also. Yeah, it is. Nice find, honey. Thank you. Thank you very much. So it's ironic that one way goes the other way, the other way goes the other way, and one goes up. Right? This is holding the X. Yeah. This is next to the X. What, what's the other one like? As we walk among the flora, the daytime light was slowly saying goodbye to us. We were in a race with Mother Nature's glow to find these structures, knowing deep down inside that once the darkness shadows us, these creatures known as Bigfoot may come around. Well, we're leaving the tree, X. Actually really nice. It's very, very cool. I'm really glad Tammy found it. It's an amazing find. We may not have found the structure that we were looking for, but Tammy did make an amazing discovery, so that's really cool. Hey, footy, footy, footy. I'm gonna tell you what's scarier than Sasquatch. Spiders. Spiders are way scarier than Sasquatch. Give me anyway. I don't know, Jason. They've always been super scary. And then they always run at me. <laughs> and then it doesn't matter. Like every there could be ten people in the room and it runs directly at me like it knows. That you're scared. That I'm scared. <laughs> and it probably does. But yeah, it's always been that way. I wake up having night terrors seeing spiders in the room with my eyes open. Yeah, right. Here, footy footy. Hang on, there's a spider. And we got spiders. Jen! Jen, get it! Oh. <laughs> it's a good thing I was here for you. Here, footy footy. <laughs> Woo! While Jenna and I stopped to listen to something moving in the forest, we didn't notice that Tammy, Jenna, and Todd disappeared down the trail out of sight. And just like that, Jenna and I were alone in the forest. Okay, we heard, we heard a howl. And then we heard a crack in the forest, like right in here. Even though it was probably a raccoon or a possum, I just we wanted to point out that we weren't just hearing things. How? Okay, I, I guess you can say that we were hearing things. Okay, no, we heard, we heard a howl, and then we heard a crack in the forest, like right in here. Not saying it's Bigfoot, but you know. <laughs> What is that? Something's cracking in the forest. Are those coyotes? It's like something's walking with us in the forest. Well, why would you guys go that far back? We're coming, shut up! Okay, somebody called on us. Hello? We're coming. We're coming. Listen. Listen. Shh, hang on. Shh.
You hear that? He's saying it's a dog. Oh, okay. Okay. So the tribal police are over at where we parked the vehicle. So we're on First Nations land and we can't leave Jen's side. So what's happening? Well, I guess the tribal police have been called. <laughs> so because our team didn't stick with us, um, they're up there with the tribal police and without me went next to them. So. Hello, how are you? All right, all right. Good, good? All right, I called you guys in, so. Yep. We got called all, in. Huh? Yeah, they yeah. called you guys in. Because yeah. you guys are out in the woods. So? Yeah. Are we not allowed? to be out here. Not supposed to be out here. Oh. Why? We're not? Nope. I'm a tribal member. Are know. you really? Yes, yes. <laughs> okay, well, we need to see your card. Okay, send me the card. Okay, let's go. Yeah, I'm allowed. What? Yeah. <laughs> it's probably that red car. Oh, I'm sure it was. He said it was the homeowners. <laughs> yeah. You do tell her. That's why we're like yelling at you guys. Get up here. Well. I said I told him it was trying to have you filming. Huh? Were you filming? I don't know if I filmed that or not. Cause we stopped to wait on you guys. Cause we're like, man, we can't even see their lights. So we well, I, and then all of a sudden we saw his light come in. He's going, hey, hey. And we're like, oh shit. <laughs> I couldn't believe how far up you guys were. So we have uh, the cops that stopped us. But this, is, this has been a fun night so far. I'm pretty sure we heard some howls. So. Oh. Well, what do you think, guys? They almost towed our car. Oh. <laughs> but you, you decided to go for a walk, eh? I'm going as fast as I can. I know. So, yeah, so you decided to go for a little walk just in oh, yeah. case. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I had to find you guys. But you know it was us, right? Yeah, I knew it was after they read the plate, so. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we were just talking earlier today. We're not talking. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We got cameras though. Yeah. That's right. Well, we got the shot. Oh, yeah, it's all good. Okay. Okay, all guys. right, have a great right. day, guys. Nice to meet you guys. Nice to meet you. See ya. Okay, so that was it. They were pretty nice once they found out Jen was a travel member. All was good. All was good. All right, we're heading back now. Where are we going? We're going to the lodge area. Base, so, camp. base camp. Base camp. Going to base camp. Here's the start of the show. I'm gonna take my pants up. <laughs> right now? And put on shorts because I'm really itchy. Breaking the law. Okay, there's plenty of Breaking the law. There's, there's <laughs> so itchy. Once we are back warming up by the campfire, we had one more interview to record. We're rolling now. My name is um, Wesley Cloud. I'm from Panema here. I grew up just down the street from where my mom lives. I, I work up at the Obashing Treatment Center. I'm a, a residential aide to our clients there. Over the past years, I've been one of the lucky ones to see um, the Sasquatch or the Bigfoot, what everybody calls them. One morning, I was up hunting on the North Trail up there. I was c cruising down the road, just uh, got trying to get to my hunting spot. As I was riding down the down the trail there, I noticed um, what looked like a a little a little hairy person. As I was as I was riding down the road, I started to get close, maybe a hundred yards but at least. This person this person stood up. And he was probably, I would guess, around seven, eight feet tall. He's uh, built like a like a rattler, but he just had hairy, hairy arms and big, big, wide, wide body, chest. Stood up. He looked like about seven, eight feet tall. As I was getting, as I was getting closer, he stood up straight. 
turned and looked at me, bent down to like a crouch and then took off, took about three, four steps before he got off the road, down onto the other side of the ditch. As I was looking at him, he, he looked like a, a human person, but he was standing far from me, about maybe 100 yards down the side of the road. When he got up, when he stood up, he went across, went across the, high, the trail onto the ditch, onto the other side. When I got to that point where he was, where I seen him last, was the imprints where he stood like four or five maybe steps and went off the road. When I realized what I had seen, I had the shaky feeling in my body as I, as I. While we were listening to Wesley tell his story, suddenly there was a crack that came from the forest. Tammy, Todd and I jumped up we left Jen to finish recording Wesley, and we headed into the dark forest to find whatever was moving around. Okay. Our luck. It was a 900 pound chip, Bigfoot. Uh, go for a little hike through the forest, see, well, you know, maybe we can get them, or whatever it is, uh, following us. As I, as, I, as I watched him walk into the trail, into the woods, When, when I got back home, I came to see my mom. I told my mom what I had saw. I remember a story from one of my elders that that Sasquatch was, was looking for an offering. So I came home, took a watermelon and cut it in four chunks and split it open, four chunks. And I took it to the exact spot where I seen that Bigfoot. It is small. Oh, it's up in a tree. It's probably just a raccoon. Whoop! Whoop! There's them. Yeah, I know. Oh, I can hear them. They're over. They're in front of us. Yeah. So if we kept walking, we'd find them there? Or should we go back? I think that we should probably head back down that path. Okay. So we're heading back now. Uh, uh, gonna go back to uh, camp and warm up by the fire. Yeah, no doubt. It was getting in the evening when I got out there. When I, as I was putting that offering to the Bigfoot out on the trail there, I had a feeling that I was being watched by, by that Bigfoot, but it, you know, it didn't, it didn't bother, it didn't scare me or anything, it just, just at that point there when I got shaky, that was the only time I got actually scared of what I saw. This person, this, this Sasquatch, he was covered with hair, probably four inches of hair on his arms. Right here like that. And hair down his legs. You think of going into the forest, you know, into the direction to see if you find him? When I last saw him, he was heading, see where the east boundary goes, east and what, south and north. When I seen him, he went across the road, back into a, a plantation. There's a sea, big cedar swamp back there. Cause I, all this, all this area I hunt there, you know, we find water and swamp, lots of cedar. So before this happened, did you believe in Sasquatch? I, I believed in Sasquatch, you know, because I heard him before. I heard him 
from where we live at, you can hear them howling back here, back this way. Then way, way down here, you can hear them howl, howl. Do you think we might get an encounter tonight? Yeah, I, I, there's a trail that goes in the back here. It's, it's called the first trail that goes east and west. Goes this old logging road. And I, I think that Bigfoot I heard was walking on that trail. So he. With all these people who tell me these stories about seeing these giant hairy creatures roaming the forests, I'm beginning to believe that these Bigfoots, well, they might just be real. As the night drifted along, we were all getting tired. So it was time for us to turn in for the night. I'm excited to see what tomorrow brings. <laughs> this is me taking off all the makeup they made me put on earlier. <laughs> night. Good night all. Time for some sleep. So with that said, good night. Okay, so we're going uh, to a gas station here and I just want to let everyone know that there was this giant spider and Tammy, Jen, and you know, Jenna, they were terrified. Love. I had to step in and save them, you know? Um, so no. when I put this in the documentary, man, you should have seen Tammy. Scared, it was crazy. It was him, he was the one who was scared. He wouldn't go he in would, the tent. He couldn't even give me the camera to get the shot for him because he was too scared. Don't listen to what they say. I am like, my name, go ahead, finish it. Is Jason McKenzie. McKenzie. The scaredy cat. The scaredy kitty. Okay, honestly, I was scared Jason of the spider, Thunder. okay? Thunder okay, Thunder Are you guys Tell like that? Them. I was terrified I of, the, of the spider that was the size of a toothpick. Of a toothpick. <laughs> it was bigger sure. than that. Its legs were the size of a toothpick, each one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Actually, it was a good size. It was called the Minnesota fishing spider. No, I'm not. I'm not kidding. It actually had a little tiny fishing pole. <laughs> what, it was an emotional moment for us to say goodbye to Vicky and her family. Offerings. They are such wonderful the people, and we will miss them. Aura. And, the, and the sweet grass is kind of like the same. Same, th same thing, like a, like incense, like you know, like they burn in church and stuff like that. We now head to an area to relax and reflect on our expedition. You will get to see the she squatches in their fun and wild side. Okay, maybe not their wild side, but you will get to see how much fun that they are to hang out with. Carry on. Oh, I can only see Jen. You don't have to lean over as far. You can only see Jen. He's teasing. No, you don't have to lean over as far. Okay. You can do whatever makes you feel comfortable. This I just don't want you to look idea. awkward. <laughs> to get, so so we'll you know, <laughs> just go sit like this. Sure. It, well, you know, if we all do it, then it would just look be like, be like we we're we're a the, team. <laughs> well, there's the she squatches. <laughs> So bad. <laughs> and we, we are, are the, the She Squatchers. We are the She Squatchers. You know, that would have been amazing. <laughs> Where's the glitter? <laughs> hey, glitter! <laughs> hey, we do have those. Remember, we have those two Most smoke palms. things. Let's try it again. Let's try it again with the, with the, with the jazz hands. With the jazz with hands. hands. Okay. When do we put the jazz hands? After. We are. We are the uh, she squatch. I don't know. Okay, just for fun. Go ahead, do it. Go right, ahead. Just... My name is Jenna Grover. And I'm Jen Cruz. And I'm Tammy Trichel. And, and we, we are, are the, the she squatches. Oh, that's so bad and corny. I hated it. You didn't do it. You didn't do it. No, but you're supposed to do this. She's the only one. It looks kind of. These old. are jazz hands, girls. These are. Not and they are yes. glove mitts. Although she is in the front, so I suppose she could go like this. Yes. We no, are. Or, yeah, in the front. Yeah, like this. You should do like this. Yeah, because we're both going like going this. Like, yeah. Perfect. Don't okay, look wait, at me. I'll go this way. Look at that camera. Okay. And I'll, this yeah. way? Yes. Yeah, so okay. And Jen up like a <gasps> Yeah, you then it, okay. Like okay. Yay, yay, yay. Ready? I can do that. Okay. <laughs> yay, yay, yay. <clears throat> I can do that. Okay. My name is Jenna. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> Go. My name is Jenna Grover. And I am Jen Cruz. And I'm Tammy Trichel. And, and we, we are, are the She Squatchers! <laughs> Damn it, I did it wrong. You're I went like this. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Could that be part of the bloopers? <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, so how has this expedition affected you in a positive way? How much fun did you guys have? What was the funnest thing that you've done on this expedition? Boy, how did it, how did it all begin? Well, first thing we did was we met at the airport, which was absolutely amazing. We got to pick up Tammy and what was his name? Oh yeah, Jason. Jason Kenzie. Jason Kenzie. Supposed to be like. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, I needed some love. Oh, okay. yes. Dinky. Everybody wants their time. Get him away, Bruno. But I, I think it was important that you felt how powerful the place was. You know, that it, it's a very spiritual, very powerful place. Mm -hmm. You know, and I think it's always important to acknowledge the spirits and the just the sacred place, the sacredness of a place. Oh, yeah. I did too. Did he? I had the best sleep I've had in like years. 24 hours. Ah! Oh, <laughs> you know what, Jason? I want you to do a cutaway in the dark of her going, coming around a tree, going. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we can do that. We'll have the light. We'll have the light. I don't want the camera. Did Just he record look. her doing that? Maybe I should. Maybe I should. Maybe I should. Go ahead, say it. Do it. Right now. <laughs> Squatchy. <laughs> do you do your Disney one? Well, it's hard to do when I'm sitting down. It comes from the <laughs> diaphragm. From right here. Go, go ahead. Oh, really? Yes, right I, now? No, I just want to hear it. Oh. Um, I have to be in the moment. This is for you, Disney. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty then. Say, here, Bigfoot. Here, Bigfoot. Bigfoot. No, I'm kidding, okay. <laughs> so, I Jason, did you, know, you know, did you, I gotta tell you a little speed to a bit about Jenna. Did you know that she likes to take weird pictures of herself? So there's one in her house of her sitting, and she's in like a formal outfit, really oh. fancy, right? Yeah. And she's sitting in front of this grand piano and she's going, <gasps> like she's gonna play it, like she's like this grand piano player. She's, <gasps> she's got a picture of herself. She blew it up this big and she hung it in her house. Actually, there is a story behind that. We were on a cruise. We were on like a mother-daughter cruise. And my family chose to get that to be the big one. And they said, you have to like give it to Jason. And I said, okay, <laughs> I love it. So you're right. We did have that one blown up. I put it right in his room. So every time he wakes up, there I am. When I'm gone, I literally, um, I have a printer that I print my face, like a picture of my face, and I'll put it on the windows and the refrigerator and everywhere else I know he's going to look. Pillows? So pillows, yeah, I put it on the pillow next to him. <laughs> so he will not forget me when I'm gone. Is this all You're the gonna time? You're going to miss me when I'm gone. This is all the time? No, only when I'm so gone. So right now when you left, you did it? Not this time. Only when I'm gone for months, like three months, when I go to Texas. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Put your face on a Sasquatch <laughs> and just put it everywhere. <laughs> Even on the steering wheel of his car. Just Don't give me ideas. <laughs> I'm serious. I might do that. <gasps> what if I put my face on a Sasquatch? You're right. I, I could know. totally like make them into stickers and stick them on So what everything. you do is you find the Sasquatch and you just cut out the, 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 the head and then you cut out the hole and then stick your head in there. Yeah. Even And then in Photoshop, Send me it, and I'll I'll make your face the same color as the Sasquatch. <laughs> I'll try and match it. But I think that's a great idea. In fact, I think we should have stickers <gasps> with our faces on it. God. Would you buy stickers with our faces on it? <laughs> she would feel so special. Hi, at nine one one. I got a stalker <laughs> in Canada. Okay. He's not even from America. <laughs> so now, tell us something funny that you know about Jen. About Jen? Funny? Just like you better be careful. <laughs> um, that's appropriate. Well, Jen does not like spiders. Jen, I'm sorry. That's not a secret. Okay. <laughs> well, Something okay. Funny. Yeah. Well, well a funny. lot of her reactions are funny. I guess that's what I'm seeing in my head. Get it up! Get it! Get it! Get it! Get it! Whenever she wants somebody to do something for her, her voice gets really high and she talks like a little girl. Hey, you can get for me, please. 
Yes, yes. And most people do. Most people do. They do. They fall yeah. for it. I quit doing that about <laughs> two years ago, but I still do plenty for her. She just doesn't have to use the baby voice. <laughs> so what funny things do you know about Tammy? I'm yeah. scared to tell you anything about Tammy. <laughs> She'll kick my ass. I won't kick your ass. <laughs> Go ahead, go ahead, anyone? Every time I fall down, she's laughing behind me, except for the other night when I fell down. I <laughs> because was like, I was in front of you. <laughs> she didn't see it. I was like, there's no one laughing. We're going to go back to the trail now um, and keep looking along the trail. So when, when we do lose all the light, we won't be too far in <laughs> because it gets so, so dark in here when the light is gone. gone. There I went. There we you didn't even get it on camera. There we go. <laughs> he almost Tammy's not laughing. <laughs> if I had been behind you, I would have laughed. I have the bruise to prove it. <laughs> what has been the funnest event that you've been to? A big event event. or expedition? No, a Bigfoot event, event that you've talked at and that you spoke at. Well, I mean, I've liked it like um, Ocean Shores, Washington for the the inside part of that yeah but i also liked the tennessee one because that's where we got our clear footage mm -hmm. what about you oh boy i they're all so special they really are so we meet special. a lot of good people at yeah the at all of them and, and we make con and we meet new friends that you know are at priceless yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah more connections yeah and they're hard to to separate you know they really are because you want to go back to every single one of them mm -hmm. you do and see all those people again. And it's never it's never enough time because you just that want that one more day. I tell you, you know what my favorite is? Uh, when we were sitting around with Tom Cantrell and what I saw. And that was in in Washington, I think was Medaline Falls. Medaline Falls, mm -hmm. yep. Yeah. That was recent. That was last year, wasn't it? Yeah, it was about a year ago. Mm -hmm. Last spring, I think. Do you have a favorite Bigfoot researcher? that you like to talk to? Oh boy. There's so many fabulous people. Yeah. Sorry. I, I can't pick say, one. <laughs> I was going to say Jason Kenzie. Jason Kenzie. My good friend, Jason Kenzie. Yeah. Jason Kenzie, he's the best. You're lying. <laughs> You're lying. Bring the shovel. I want my money back. The $50. Give me. <laughs> exactly. You I'll pay you guys me. off. Uh, <laughs> oh, you forgot to turn the camera off before you gave us our yeah, money. Exactly. Right. So, yeah, who's your favorite Bigfoot researcher that you've met over the years? Bob you Gimlin. Know, I was I gotta say, go with Bob. And, and he gives the best hugs he I've does. ever had in my life. Bob yeah. Gimlin. Bob Gimlin. Yeah. There's so it many. We love all of them. <laughs> Almost all of everybody that we've met, we've had a great experience with and... I, we enjoy all of them. Yeah, they all have such a different, unique quality about them, and they're looking in such different ways, and their thought processes are so wonderful because everybody's trying to find new ways to do this stuff, and it's all coming together. I think it's really fun when we do an event and then they put together an expedition right after with the people that were the speakers. Yes. And we got to go on expedition with people That's that we wouldn't normally get to go with, like... Adam Davies, yes. Robert Kreider, yes. mm -hmm. um, and we learned so much from sharing with them. Mm -hmm. I don't know if they learned anything from us, but we definitely learned from them. And they probably learned that it can be fun. Mm. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that you can laugh when you're doing these kind of things. So out of all the places that you've had an expedition at, what is your favorite state? Washington. Or for me. Washington. It's, it just seems to be the most active. They give it so much more attention. I think there's a lot, a lot more per capita going on there than elsewhere. But for experiences of our own. I can't, it's so hard to pick. <laughs> we have a great time and we, we get great stuff. You know, each place has something that it offers us. So I definitely like the FLIR footage on the mountain of Ten uh, top of the mountain in Tennessee. Yeah. Cause that was one of our biggest things. And we also have this thick structure here in Minnesota, mm -hmm. you know, so, I mean, lots of, all the places offer things to us. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what do you want to say to your fans? Keep motivating. Get out there. Find your own answers. And, yeah, just be you. 
explore. Exactly. You know, life is an adventure. And life you, is an adventure! Yes, and you know, I have to say too, I love the fact that there are so many more women teams right now that you're hearing about. I mean, you're hearing about, and it, we didn't start it, but we're part of the movement, you know, and I think it's fabulous that women are out there taking their own ideas, you know. I right. Just, I think it's and great. Not even just about Bigfoot, I mean... Find the, the things that make you feel alive and make you feel passion and happy and feed your soul and do those things, you know, find a way to, to get paid to do those things. Or if you can't get paid to do it, do them anyway, because you need to make your own self happy. Mm -hmm. That has to be first and foremost for everybody, yeah. men or women. Yeah. We're not like the perfect 25 year old blonde, blonde, blonde bombshell yeah. anymore. Yeah. <laughs> but we're, we're normal people. And I think that's why people like us so much because we're them we're real yeah we're real we're the not yeah we're not hollywood's version of we are yeah. our own people yeah, yeah. see this it's <laughs> flat <laughs> don't see this <laughs> well you said we're real people i thought i just let everybody know you don't need a big butt <laughs> oh dear lord oh you love it i do and, you know, I think it's sad that when people have real experiences and then because they didn't get on the camera, they try to recreate it and pass it off as mm -hmm. the real thing. And people, people, it, too, the technology is too good these days mm -hmm. for people to be able to do that and get away with it. Right. Lies, so, will, lies will come back to you. Lies will always right. come definitely. back to you. So we don't agree with doing things like that. I think it ruins people and their reputation and yep. then they're just done. Yeah, and yeah. you can't embellish either. You can't embellish and make it look like there's look like there's a lot more than there was because right. the mm -hmm. truth always comes out in the end. So. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, so we don't support that. And here's the other thing. There's enough bickering going on in the Bigfoot community mm -hmm. that we don't get involved in it. Mm -hmm. So true. a lot of times people are like, hey, what's your opinion on this, on this person over oh. here? And I say, we don't participate. They try too. People they ask us so all hard. the time. They, I call it chum in the waters. They're trying to get people to to react to it. What do you think about this? What or do you think to be about that? on their team. Yeah. Right. Yes. And, right. and I'm like, we don't participate in that. Everyone out in the world is smart enough to look at it and make their own conclusion of whether that's real or not. You don't need me or them to tell you it's fake or it's real. That's right. And who are we to be experts anyway? We there are there. no experts, and we weren't there. We weren't there. The only people that know the evidence they find are the people that are out they're doing it and collecting it mm -hmm. and I will say you know, there are a few times where I have spoken up where people were talking about the massacre at Bluff Creek you know I'm like that's because when you listen okay so as an energy worker you can feel energy on a physical level to the off right when Bob Gimlet tells that story there's no bad energy there even if he was mm -hmm. if, if, if that had really happened there would be an energy behind the words because mm -hmm. he would remember it, and there would be an energy to that. That never happened. Yeah. That never happened. So I will say that. That didn't happen. We love Bob Gimlin. Yeah. We love Bob Gimlin. Him, him and his whole family are beautiful people. Yes. They're just wonderful, so we love you, Bob. Yep. So, yeah, actually, if uh, even if there was multiple Bigfoots, I don't think they would just pick them off. No. no. Bob doesn't really seem... He's I haven't not. met Bob, but I'd like to one day. I've met him. We've, we've met him several times. He's a sweet... Honorable man. Charming. Yes. Very yes. charming. Bottle and he that loves charm. the ladies. He if you could the bottle ladies. that charm, you would be rich <laughs> mm -hmm. beyond yeah. your wildest dreams. He is, he is a gentleman. He is very honorable, very honest. He would never, ever do anything like that. It comes from the heart, too. Yes. You can just feel it. It's just heartfelt he's love. Genuine. He's genuine. Yes, he's just giving his love. Let's talk about what, what happened in the woods the other night on the reservation. Oh, well, then we need Todd for that because he was there. Todd! Come on over, Todd. Oh. Hey, Todd. Hey, Todd. Ooh, Todd. Hey, Todd. Hey, how you doing? No, we said Todd. Todd. Oh. Wait, wait, wait. Climbing over. <laughs> All right. How you doing, ladies? Good, good. good. How are you? Doing so, good, doing good. So the other night when we were on the Red Lake Indian Reservation and we were going to go out in the woods, what did I say to everybody? Stay together, stay, stay with together. me. Stay with me. Mm -hmm. You're not allowed to be out there without a tribal member and I am it, so stay with me. Stay with me, stay with me. And what did you guys do? I was up. Well, <laughs> no. We were on the same path. I, I, I had to keep up with Jen, because I had to Jenna? keep her safe. Jenna? Know, nobody should be out there wandering around alone. <laughs> so, 
You know, wait, wait. We're, we're meanwhile, walking. meanwhile, I had no flashlight and yeah. nobody with me, but carry on. Okay. <laughs> so we're walking along, just chit chatting, and I'd look back every once in a while, and I'd see your guys' flashlight, you know. So, you know, I just hear. kept tabs. I kept tabs on you, and then we're walking along, and I don't hear nothing. I look back, I don't see anything, no light. So I said, let's stop and wait for him to catch up. So we're sitting there chatting, and then next thing we know, we hear, hey, and we see flashlights coming the other way. And I was like, right away, I, I kind of figured it was a uh, ranger or, or police, somebody like that. And then probably within seconds after that, you showed up mm -hmm. in the dark, no flashlight, you know. That would have looked suspicious. No flashlight, sure. all by myself. All by herself. Yeah. So, you know, we wait for, you know, the officer comes up to us and he, you know, wants to know what we're doing there. And we're like, uh oh, you know, so right away we're like, we must have said your name 10 times. <laughs> we're here with Jen Cruz. Cruz. We're here with Jen Cruz. And then Jen is like, we're with the she squatters. <laughs> and then he was like, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> he was not. He was not okay with it. <laughs> I am arresting you. <laughs> so well, then, that case. Uh, you know, we tried calling. Tried yep, calling you I guys. Called. You didn't answer. I it did not ring. Well, you know, no. Listen, verbally, we heard you yelling. guys yelling. Mm -hmm. We didn't know why. We just thought you were like doing a howl or doing something. I think we did yell back. Shut up. We need her. And what does she say? She says, shut up. Shut up. Yeah. <laughs> well, we were hearing so, some, where was movement in the forest. So we were standing <laughs> still listening. And you guys are yelling. We're like, shut up. And we're like, no, come on. <laughs> so Me Tammy well. calls, up, calls you on the phone mm -hmm. and says, Yo, hey, you know, the tribal police is here. You, you got to come here. You know, they want, they want to see you. And, and <laughs> Jen's like, well, wait a minute. We think we thought we heard something. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly. And I'm like, and I'm like, uh, when the police are waiting on you, you come. You, know? you don't say wait a minute. Yeah, you don't say wait a minute. <laughs> so I mean, once Jen and Jason showed up, you know, uh, talked to the officer. He was pretty cool after that. After, especially after you showed him your uh, tribal ID. It doesn't and, hurt that I knew the guy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you did know the guy. Come to think of it. Yeah. But. Uh, I don't know, maybe he didn't recognize you. No, he, he was very official until yeah, very he saw official. that tribal card. Yeah, yeah he did official. not know that I was a tribal member. Oh, he did not know. He, he knew didn't. You, but he did he not knows know. me, but he did not know I was a tribal member. But as soon as you said tribal member, he was almost gone. He was walking so fast. He was fast like, oh, on. okay. <laughs> he was kind of miffed that you were a tribal member. Uh -huh. He was like, oh, Sid, I'm going to arrest a bunch of white people. Yeah. <laughs> we got the report that there was five white people walking around yep. in the five, woods. Five people walking around on a reservation yep. is not a good news. With yeah. North Dakota plates, so yeah. we were definitely yeah. not North from there. Yeah. So but what would have happened if you were not a tribal member? Oh, well there, would, there, well, there could have been trouble. You can't be off walking around off the road. Non-tribal members are not supposed to be out walking off the road in any area on that reservation without a tribal member. So what kind of trouble? I mean, you could go to jail. Jail time. So he said Vehicle three months. Vehicle impounded, you know. Yeah, things like that. Three months minimum? Well, it could be three months, 90 days, 90 they days. They almost towed her car. Yeah, yeah. they mm -hmm. almost towed her car too, so. Yeah, I mean. yeah. Yeah, so it's not something that people should be doing. Because it's serious. It's serious, serious stuff. It's so when I said, stay stuff. with me, stay with me, make sure you stay by my side <laughs> next time. Yeah, but you know what? If we would have stayed by your side, the police would have had to run even further and they would have been even more upset. <laughs> That's true. He was huffing and puffing when yeah. he was. Oh, yeah, he was a little out of breath. Yeah, but he was very professional. He was very professional. He was very professional. Very yes, he was. Yeah. He was very professional. And it just wouldn't be a She Squatchers Avenger if the police did not Didn't show, show up. up. Right. The police always show up. Oh, you, you know what? They walk away with smiles. That's the good part. Yeah. yeah. What are you doing? Oh, see, even that night. So I was at the truck because I, I left my tribal ID in the car. And so I said, well, it's at the car. So he says, okay, let's go see it. And so then he took, I gave him my ID and he went back and did whatever in the, in the police car with my tribal ID. And he comes back and he gives it back. And, and uh, he says, so what's your business here? And I said, we're looking for Bigfoot. Duh. And 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 I and and I go. I'm in my official uniform. It's official business. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And he kind of laughed. But you know, for real. I mean, hey, 
we could be doing a lot worse things. But That's then he true. showed up the next day, all giggle, like smiled. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because we were okay then. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well. Yeah, yeah. This is this is a great story. Okay. You just got to respect the tribal rules, mm -hmm. and it's it's a sovereign nation. It's a sovereign nation, and. You know, that's a, that's a really good thing. All the other Chippewa tribes in the state of Minnesota signed the treaty, so they became the Minnesota Chippewa tribes, except for my tribe. They did not sign it, so they stayed separate. And so it gave us a lot more freedom there and um, a lot more independence than the other tribes have. So, and that's how we maintained ownership of all the land on, in the treaty. All the reservation land is completely held in complete trust by all the tribal members. And not to mention your culture. And the culture, yep, mm -hmm. yep. And they're allowed to spot hunt. Yeah, the hunting, the hunting laws and regulations are completely different on the reservation versus off the reservation. And only tribal members can hunt on the reservation. As a matter of fact, non-tribal members can't even fish on the big lake, can't. They, there are some smaller lakes on the reservation that um, are allowed to have non-tribal members fish if they have a tribal member fishing guide. But it's not never the big lake. So never. even if you're First Nations, you can't even fish in that lake? Not unless you are a tribal member of that reservation. So is everybody that's in that community a tribal member? Well, there are people who marry non-tribal members, and even though they're married to each other, they can't take their spouse fishing if they're not a tribal member. How many tribal members are there? Um, you know, I haven't looked up the current numbers, but the last time I looked, there was like 10,000 members, but most of them don't live there. 10,000? Yeah. Here I'm thinking, a 40, 50. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what? 10, most 000? of them don't live there. Yeah. Most of them live elsewhere. There's a huge population of Red Lake enrolled tribal members who live in Minneapolis. There's a whole community. When I've gone and worked at the college, because Red Lake Nation has a college in Red Lake, and then they have a, a college site in Minneapolis right across the street from the U.S. Bank Stadium. It's beautiful. And uh, when I've gone there to work at the college, I've met people who are Red Lake tribal members enrolled who have never even been to the reservation before. They have a whole community in Minneapolis of Red Lake people. Good. Let me just mention, you asked what was one of the most fun events that we'd gone to, and you mentioned story. Um, it was so fun. It was just like a little mini storybook town. town yeah. mm -hmm. So, I mean, it was just so incredible. And that, that I have to say is up there with one of my favorites. Indiana is one of my favorite places to investigate mm -hmm. to outside of Minnesota. I would like to go back to Indiana and go to the caves. There's over 500 oh, yeah. caves oh, there. Yeah. I so, want to go. So they say, yeah. 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 That would be go. fun yeah. to do that again. Well, maybe yeah. in the near future. And and I just want to say, Todd, will you take me canoeing? <laughs> no. <laughs> Not on your life. <laughs> You're done. You're done. You're done. You're, done. <laughs> You're fired. <laughs> what, but why? Hey, you want to explain that? Why you tipped? Go ahead. No, I, no, Jen. I'm still trying. You know I replayed in my mind. In, in I have no idea. How she I went from behind. I thought from behind. I thought from front. I don't know what the happened. Dog, I can the tell dog you, was coming I over. I can tell you why you tipped. Because I saw it. What happened? This is kind of embarrassing on Jen's part. She tried to steer the boat. <laughs> the dog. She actually we were so did. Close. We were so close. To tried landing. to move it, and it was a subliminal reaction because it was coming towards the dog, and you went like this yeah. to try. <laughs> Get out as of the way. It, like <laughs> it went. It went. No, no. As soon as it went that way, she tried to right herself, right herself by going this way. And when it that didn't work. She went that way, and that was it. And, and the and she action in the draw. Oh, she went first. She was just like, Whoa. but I saw <laughs> poor this poor dog. It was like slow mo, and it was like, <laughs> and he was so he was so mad. I could see the anger yeah. when he was going down exactly. there. No, so no, angry. no. The anger didn't come as he was going down. That was more of a shock. It was when he came out of the water, like one of those, one of those sexy guys. And he was like, oh, oh.
the words that were coming out of his mouth, I never thought I'd hear out of your oh mouth. Is it that bad? Oh, no, you were just so mad. But look at Bruno over there. Don't worry about the damn dog. <laughs> we were coming in full speed right towards the dog. I'm like, move, move, move. I have, we were... I have something to tell you. You don't steer the canoe in the front. Oh, especially the by... <laughs> exactly. And I understand. But next time, let the animal move. They will move, I know. <laughs> you think it's going to ram it and kill the dog? It's not. I was worried for the dog. Oh, I was. Look at the dog. Who, me? It's a good thing you didn't know about all the spiders that were hanging on the seat behind your butt. <laughs> <laughs> you know what he said when I said, I see a spider in the boat? And he's like, yeah, don't freak out in the, in the canoe. Don't freak out in the canoe. And I was like, don't look at the spiders. Don't look at the spiders. And uh, yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. Because he's seen me freak out from the spiders. Yeah, I don't like spiders. You know, but get it, get it. Other than yes. landing, you did good. Uh, we, <laughs> it's good and, right and up to had, where it was. We time. had a textbook approach, too. We had momentum. We would yep. have slid up on yep. that bank you at least have. a foot, yep. and you would have been fine. But yep. you do this. <laughs> Takes one. No. I'm telling you. I know. Especially in a canoe, before. because once they're going, yep. they're going. It's, yep. Know. Just want to say thank you to everyone who has joined us for our adventure on this journey. And it's not over yet because there's going to be a lot more adventures coming your way. And we'll see you then. Bye. Goodbye, Bye. Everybody. See you guys. That's good. Once I swim That's across good. Turtle Creek, man, them snappers were around my feet. <laughs> With no rock unturned and a passion in their hearts, the she squatchers are amazing ladies with the spirit of a golden eagle, the strength of a grizzly bear, and the courage of an arctic wolf. Join in on our adventure. Jason, you're not a she squatcher. What we want to say is we have so much fun looking for Bigfoot. And over the years, the mystery of Bigfoot has brought our friendship closer. Every day we grow stronger and wiser as we learn more and more about these cryptids. We want to say thank you to all of our friends for joining us in this Search for Sasquatch. My name is Tammy Trichel. I am a member of the She Squatchers. No, I did that wrong. Okay, what am I doing? <laughs> Hi, my name is Jenna. I'm one of the three screech scree choppers. <laughs> Sorry. Back to the top, clap like a gunshot. Where are we stopping and going to? Let's start again. That wasn't very good. Hold on. You just killed a duck. <laughs> it was a loon. We're not gonna hear loons today. <laughs> what is that? It's small. It is small. Oh, it's up in a tree. It's probably just a raccoon. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Did you see that one? <laughs> oh, I thought you were snorting. That was so bad. <laughs> Look, it's a raccoon.